either. When we use our money to buy stock, as shareholders, we're entrusting management to grow our investment for us, right? So we would hope that they'll ultimately do what's in the best interest of the shareholders, but that's not always the case. The man, the myth, the legend, the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, has most of his net worth wrapped up in Berkshire Hathaway stock. So yeah, he's management, but he's also got a lot of skin in the game as a shareholder as well. So that got me thinking, which I assure you did not hurt, about what are some businesses that have a good amount of insider ownership or management with skin in the game of their own stock. I used finviz.com to run a screen and look for businesses that had at least 20% insider ownership, a price to sales of under one, which means that you're paying less than a dollar for every $1 of a business's sales and a price to free cash flow of under 10. And that price to free cash flow ratio shows us how much we are paying for a business's free cash flow, which if it had a price to free cash flow ratio of 5.99 would mean that we're paying about $5.99 in stock for every $1 of a company's free cash flow. So I have for you 10 such businesses, which you may find interesting of a deeper look-see, whatever that means to you. And remember, dear dividend investing viewer, this is just for fun and entertainment and you should never take financial advice from a welder on YouTube. By the way, my name is Russ. It's so very nice to meet you. And here we have the spreadsheet where in the description below, there is a link for free. And remember, if you want to check out what we've got going on in the portfolios, click the link below for dapperdividends.com where you can also sign up for the free weekly newsletter and keep track of everything we bought, sold, dividends received, and some other useful information to help you become a better dividend investor. So the first company is Lionel Basel, which takes oil and natural gas and turns them into materials used in everyday things like packaging, clothes, and cars. If you hover over the ticker symbol, it will take you to the Lionel Basel or whatever company you're going to see seeking alpha page. And if you hover over the name, it will take you to the investor relation page for that business. Insider ownership, 20%. Price to free cash flow, 8.64. Price to sales, 0.74. For Lionel Basel, if you were to buy them here, you're paying 74 cents for every one dollar of their sales currently, which is definitely a nice discount. Return on invested capital, the ROIC. All that means is what kind of return is management getting out of all the capital available to the business, whether it's from debt or equity. Return on equity, this is the return on the shareholders' equity. And with the ROIC and the ROE, we'd like to see these the higher the better. So mid-teens and above is really, really solid. And then I have for you their 10-year average on these, which for Lionel Basel is 45%. Net debt can get businesses into trouble, so the lower the net debt, the better, 44%. The ICR, a lot of you don't know what this is, it's the interest coverage ratio. It means how many dollars of operating income do they have to cover every one dollar of interest expense. This number we want to see the higher the better, 8.04, so they have eight dollars and four cents of operating income available to cover every one dollar of interest expense, easily able to cover that. Then the shares out outstanding five-year CAGR, meaning are they buying back shares? So here we see they've reduced their shares outstanding by 3.4% on average over the last five years. We want to see the free cash flow per share five-year CAGR. That number is how much they are growing year after year over the last five, the free cash flow per share. So hey, about 5%, pretty nice. A couple last numbers for you here. The free cash flow payout ratio trailing 12 months, 45%. That number, the lower the better. So that's nice and low for Lionel Basel. Now the free cash flow yield, we've covered this in another video. It's kind of an interesting way to think about the risk you want to take for investing in a business because all equities are risky. And if you invest in something like a 10 year treasury that has a free cash flow yield of about four and a half percent right now, that money is guaranteed, but there's no chance for the underlying principle to grow where within a stock or an equity, you can have a much bigger chance at return, but there's also risk. So for these companies, when you see a free 
cash flow yield, that is a nice 12% return that you can be getting right now with the Lionel Bazel. Then we have the dividend yield and the dividend growth five-year CAGR. And then what they do is the last thing that we have for you. Number nine, we have Dick's Sporting Goods, which sells sports equipment, clothes, and accessories mostly here in the United States, online, and through their stores. 29% insider ownership. We are going to go very fast from here on out. So if you would like to check these out a little bit more in depth, click the free spreadsheet link in the description. Price to sales, 0.76. Dix has been reducing their shares outstanding by 1.61% over the last five years. Dividend yield of 3.55% and also a free cash flow yield of 12%. But their net debt is a little bit higher at 47%. Number eight, Movado Group, which designs, makes, and sells watches like Movado, Coach, and Tommy Hilfinger. 32% of the insiders own this stock. Price to sales of 0.86, not as impressive of a return on equity 10 year average, but still not too shabby pushing 10%. But also check it out, Movado Group has no net debt and they have slightly been buying back shares. And look at that number, I love this. They have $161 of operating income to easily cover every $1 of interest expense. And hey, you can get a 5.09% yield on that stock right now and lock it in. And lastly, they've been growing that dividend at a 22% five-year CAGR. Number seven, Worthington Industries, ticker WOR. They make stuff from steel like propane cylinders and tanks for things like water and fuel. 38% insider ownership. Price to free cash, 6.22. Price to sales, 0.67. 16% net debt. They've been buying back those shares at a 3.4% clip on average over the last five years. A smaller dividend yield of 2%, but they've been growing it at 8% over the last five years. But they are a steel industry company, so keep that in mind that they may be tied to commodities. Number six, Dillard's, ticker DDS. They run department stores and sell a variety of products like clothes clothing, cosmetics, home furnishings, and they also do construction work. Dillard's is a really interesting story because Dillard's insider ownership, 49%, paying 70 cents for every $1 of Dillard's sales. Look at that massive return on equity lately, 51%, 20% 10 year average. They have no net debt. They've been buying back shares though. This is a very interesting story at a clip of 9 almost 10% every year for the last five years. Look at this, how crazy this is. We're watching a business that's essentially taking themselves private as they just keep buying back shares like mad people. And their free cash flow per share, 46% five-year CAGR, but you're not gonna buy them just for the dividend because it's a yield of only 0.34%. But they do have a nice 19% five-year CAGR. At number five, did you guess it was Guess? Which designs and sells clothes and accessories for men, women, and kids like jeans, dresses, and handbags. And their ticker symbol, is GES. The insiders own 50%, 0.45 price to sales. You like guess, you like this clothing. Hey, right now you'd only be paying less than 50 cents for every $1 of their sales. They do have a bit of debt though, 65%. The free cash flow per share, five-year CAGR, 228%, but check out why. It's because when we started counting from 2019, they had negative 33 cents, so it's a little bit skewed. Their free cash flow payout ratio, 37%, not as good as Dillard's at 1%, but that dividend yield for clothing, 5.32%, and they have 0% five-year growth. Number four is Grief, ticker GEF, which makes and sells packaging products like containers and boxes, and they also manage land for timber production in the southeastern United States. The insiders own 57% of the stock. Price to sales, only 69 cents. The return on equity, 10-year average is 14%, which is really nice. So the last trailing 12 months has been a little bit higher at 22%. Not as good as Dillard's, though. Coming back to Dillard's. 20% 10-year average 
and 51% trailing 12 month. Grief, slightly buying back shares, negative 0.13%. They've been reducing those, but they have been growing that free cash flow per share over the last five years on average at 39%. And they have a dividend yield of almost 3.2%. Number three, we've got Hamilton Beach Brands, ticker HBB, which makes and sells kitchen appliances like air fryers, blenders, coffee makers, and air purifiers. The insiders own 57% of the stock. Price to free cash only 1.74 and price to sales 0.29. The return on equity, they don't have a 10 year average. I could only get seven years of data, but it's still 33%, which is nice. 43% net debt. Their shares outstanding though, they have increased. So they've diluted shareholders 43%, but not to worry because their free cash flow per share on average over the last five years has gone up 84%. So making good use of those extra shares that they're diluting us with and a free cash flow yield of 50 seven percent but that is a little bit skewed because check it out they were at negative 41 cents of free cash flow per share in 2022 now they're at 731 so this is a little bit high and a dividend yield of 3.46 percent but a five-year CAGR of 37 percent number two We've got Marine Products, ticker MPX, which makes and sells fiberglass power boats for sports and fishing like Shapiro and Robalo. The insiders own 69 percent of the stock 0.77 price to sales look at the return on equity trailing 12 months 36 percent the 10-year average 26 percent that is fantastic they have no net debt and an interest coverage ratio of 711 dollars slightly buying back shares 36 percent free cash flow payout ratio and a dividend yield of 5.93 and a five-year CAGR of 11 percent so mpx looks interesting but if we hit a really hard recession i don't know how many people will be out there buying their power boats and then number one ticker l-e-n-b lenb it's lennar corporation which builds homes in the united states selling single family houses and they offer services like mortgage financing and property development where the insiders i don't know there's not much left around for any of us but they own 96 percent of the shares outstanding according to finviz.com they have a price to sales of 0.96 return on equity 10 year average 15 percent they have no net debt just like marine products they've been buying back shares slightly at 1.6 percent on average over the last five years but growing that free cash flow per share at 29 percent just a super low free cash flow payout ratio of eight percent but that dividend yield of course is a little bit small at 1.33 percent but they have a five-year CAC of 57 percent for lennar let us know in the comments below if you own any of these or if you think any of them look interesting. And our dividend millionaire investor friend Sean Androff came back on the channel recently to talk about the 10 dividend stocks that he has recently been buying. Talk about skin in the game. Click this little floating box next to my head and if you do that, I will talk to you there.